Hi, I'm James from Sonic Chur, and uh, we're going to take a look at our new product, Blanks. We're pretty excited about this. Um, it's a sample library with no samples. Uh, recently, Native Instruments updated Contact uh, 6.2 to allow the user to drag and drop their own samples onto the uh, interface of a contact instrument. We think that's great. We wanted to take advantage of it and uh, allow the user the opportunity to um, use some of the drum tools we've developed in our electroacoustic, concrete and moon kits libraries. So um, here it is. It's our drum machine. Uh, it's called, as I say, it's called Blanks. We've got eight blank slots here. Um, and then we can quite easily grab some samples, just drag them in. You see it loads, no hassle at all, which is, which is great. Uh, we can stick a snare there. Uh, rim shot here. Now I'm using some some basic 808 samples that I exported from our electroacoustic instrument. I'm going to put a hi hat there, uh, right symbol there, um, open hat there, and a couple of toms. Anyway, okay, so um, just a quick overview. As I say, these are the eight slots. Uh, each slot you can select like this with a sort of tab arrangement we've got here that shows uh, shows up orange when it's um, selected. And, and this is the first um, control screen, the, the edit screen. Um, okay, I'm going to get a pattern playing. Um, playing a kick pattern here. These are the three beat tools. I'm going to talk about those a little bit later, uh, but for now I'm just going to use it to play a pattern so you can hear what I'm doing. Okay, so the, uh, the sample module, usual things like pitch, uh, you can adjust the start time. Uh, you see it's starting later here. It's very useful. Sample rate. Um, and we've, uh, you, you can reverse, which, which is always useful, although you do need to adjust the start time for that. Okay. Um, we've also included some of the uh, vintage sampler modes that Contact has um, featured under its hood for quite a while now, actually. Uh, maybe not everybody knows they're there, but it was nice to have an opportunity to use them. There's a Emu SP1200 mode. Adds a, adds a little bit of kind of low bit depth grit, or there's an MPC60. Again, you can hear it just, just helps it cut through, gives it a nice vintage feel. Um, and this knob, this is very important. Uh, this is something we've used recently in moon kits um, and the reason we have it is to help modulate and bring samples to life more. It's uh, velocity randomized, that's what VEL RAN stands for, uh, and that interacts with these little red um, number faders that you can see all over the interface and that they're, they're just uh, simply velocity modulation. Um, so whether you're playing a pattern from um, the beat tools or from your DAW, Velocity Randomize just allows you to uh, randomize the incoming velocity value of each note. So if you were to set it to 10%, the velocity value could vary within uh, 10 values either side of that. Um, and that's quite interesting because it allows you to do things like um, randomize the pitch. If I set that quite high, you can hear that kick drum starting to jump around. That's obviously a bit extreme, but um, at a lower value, it just gives starts to give that kick drum a little bit of kind of organic movement and life. Uh, maybe something in, in the case of the 808, it, it can be quite musical. Um, Okay, and then that brings us on to our envelope controls. Uh, most people will be familiar with those. You've got, um, this is our amplitude envelope. You've got attack, you've got decay. You can change the length there. Uh, hold. J 
just all useful for, for getting a shape you want. Curve, curve's really useful. Uh, it changes the attack curve. So if you've, if you've slowed down the attack there, if you move it to the right, you get a convex curve, uh, which as you can hear, just kind of allows the original attack to fade in a bit. If you move it to the left, then you get a, a concave uh, curve uh, and it gets even softer. Um, let's set that back there. These are our filter pitch envelopes. You see that the knob changes to depth here. So um, let's take a look at the filter section. Um, three knobs. Um, it's our first filter. You get a, f a very full menu of contacts um, filters. It's currently set to the ladder uh, two pole low pass, which is a sort of Moog style, uh, but in a more gentle two pole configuration. Uh, we can take that right down. We can add this. Uh, and as I say, if we go back to, we add some resonance. And if we go back to our filter EG, uh, if we crank the depth here, we see um, you can hear a click coming through. You could make that really poppy, just so you can hear what it's doing. So you can give that, you can give that a really sharp little analog click that it didn't originally have. Really change it, and um, and as I say, this is where our velocity modulation uh, really comes into its own because we've got velocity control over all of this. If we just increase that, move our attack up maybe here, put a negative velocity value in. We'll hear the uh, attack starts to jump around. You can do the same with the depth. If we were to set some some more here, you can hear that. You can hear the attack changing. We can also change the, the decay with velocity. So you can hear you're getting a load of variety out of one sample. This is one sample, but you can make it behave like a like an analog drum machine. That's nice. Um, you can have the the resonance uh, move with velocity as well. So you're going to get a different resonance value with each hit. Okay. Uh, and you can you can have a, a similar envelope for pitch. Let's just cover that uh, again. Adjust the depth. Gives it a nice thump there. Okay, it's quite a nice. Um, rather punishing analog kick we've got going there. What I would look to do if I was making a track would be to um, come into the channel there and just see if I can crisp that up a little bit. This is Contact's uh, Pro Compressor. As I said in the Mooncakes video, I really like this. I find it uh, very precise and um, very, very easy and straightforward to, to get different results. If we just turn that on, adjust the threshold, a little bit, a little bit of attack get the release down to something more sensible. Now you won't hear anything yet, but if we increase the ratio, you should start to hear that changing. Nice, okay. Uh, we've got saturation here. Basic EQ. That didn't do a lot. There's not a lot of um, not a lot of high end to boost, but uh, we could might suck out some of those ringy middle frequencies. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, uh, we'll come to the master channel in a minute. We'd probably want to get some um, some other stuff happening in this pattern. I'm going to reduce the decay a little bit there. Let's go back to our, our beat tools. Uh, I've got a snare here. About some of those. Uh, yeah, I should have mentioned we have uh, by default you've got some velocity modulation here on the um, on the pad, which does the traditional velocity to volume modulation. I'm going to reduce that a little bit there. Uh, here's our uh, volume pan, mute, solo, etc. Okay, let's bring the hat in. Okay, that's just a single sample. Um, a single sample of an 808 hi hat doesn't sound very good like that. Again, we could um, we could try and give that some life here. A um, little bit of it. Let's randomize our velocity. Make the make the attack quite soft here, uh, but then put a negative value here. You'll find that the hardest hits get the full attack. Softer ones, softer ones, you'll hear the softer sort of shaker-like attack. Uh, and again, we could um, set the decay to vary. You hear the softer ones are getting shorter in the decay. Yeah, that's quite nice. You could try it in the NPC mode. Making a huge amount of difference there. You can always reverse. Uh, with hi hats, of course, you you want a choke group. So um, we've got our open hat here. Uh, so we want the closed hat to cut off the uh, open hat. So we just go to this menu and click include for both of those. That uh, open hat sounds quite rough. Uh, I quite like to get a band pass. You can thin it out. Okay. Okay. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. Um, we're just going to come back to our master channel um, to finish off going through these basic pages here. It's the same, based on the same configuration as Mooncits. We've got feedback compressor, uh, which sounds great. Let's, uh, bring down the release. I'm getting a bit hot there. Uh, yeah, really nice compressor that. Um, we've got a four, the four band NI uh, solid bus EQ, which is very decent. Um, um, a tape processor, which is um, which is quite useful sometimes. Grunge it up a bit. It's quite subtle, but it's quite good. And a limiter just to stop everything uh, overloading is really why that's there. Um, okay, so I think what I'm going to talk about now is is the one tab I haven't mentioned, which is drill. Now this is uh, a new version of something that we featured in Concrete for years. We used to call it Glitch. Um, 
it's got a new name um, and we've changed the way it functions a little bit it's um, it's simpler and uh, it's a lot of fun you'll see that each uh, each tab has a this little drill icon here now that's where you activate the drill processor for each uh, individual tab um, and on the main transport bar you see this bar where uh, these these controls don't change from tab to tab. There's a button that says drill. So if we put that on, that's our basic rhythm. If you turn that on, you hear it go kind of crazy um, with some extreme settings. So uh, what I might do is just turn it off all of every all the other stuff and try it on the. Um, the hats and maybe the snares, okay. Just the snare. If I go to the drill page, uh, this is where it's set up, we can change the speed of that effect. You can hear it doing a really fast drilly type roll. Um, Okay, we can modulate that with velocity and everything else, everything else. So if you had two or three different snare hits in it. You can hear faster or slower ones, you can change the, the decay. That's quite a sort of drum rolly sounding thing, but you can you can also um, change the pitch of the successive drills. Feature here, scan will 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 gradually change the point at which in the sample the drill happens as it moves along. You can see it. Not so noticeable on that sample. If I was to try it on the kick, that sounds really good. Now if I put the scan on. Hear the uh, timbre change. That's good. Okay, um, so that's how you set up drills for different keys. Uh, so you can just have one, uh, or you can have uh, have a whole bunch happening. That's the hi hat. different ways you can trigger this um, which uh, makes it quite interesting um, first of all you can see here you can just set a, uh, a key trigger um, on your keyboard um, you, you can't see on the video or you may be able to see I don't think you can though but uh, I'm just triggering the key B0 with my with my MIDI keyboard there so You can do a sort of live performance thing with that but also you can assign it to a sequencer track uh, in our beat tools so here it's set to a B0 drill trigger turn it on and um, just put it on some notes now you can set the length of uh, the length of notes so the length of time the drill will occur for that's quite short or you can have long ones or very short so short you can hardly hear it in fact it's a quarter note uh, we got a latch no not hearing that there we go
can be pretty cool um, if you set up the velocity to randomize and you set a nice high setting there. Turn a few more, a few more of the keys on. You can set it to just uh, cut in and out at different places. You can change the length of the note um, for each drum as well. Um, so if you wanted the kick drums for hold to hold for longer them to half a bar. Or well, the same with the hats. Or very short. Which works better with a hat, I think, if it's shorter. The kick drum wasn't turned on. do a quick overview of the beat tools. We're going to start with Euclidean beats. Um, and for this I've moved back to the uh, to a different sample set. It's the default um, sample set that loads up when you first uh, load up blanks. So Euclidean beats, um, as I've had cause to explain in um, numerous videos before, is based on Euclidean mathematics, which is something that I can't pretend to fully understand, but I do know it makes nice beats. So we've got a circular arrangement, and you can see here we just, these are our eight tracks again. We'll just start with a kick. You can see four kicks here, four hits set here on the knob. Now, the Euclidean aspect is that uh, however many hits we set here, they will always remain evenly spaced in this circle. So let's just see if we pick seven. You can see uh, they space themselves out. The two accents that we've set remain evenly spaced. That always sounds pretty good. If we bring in the snare on the next track, that's set to two. We've shifted those. You see this shift control here. That'll move it from the first, the very first beat. You can move it around. Uh, move it onto there. Add some more hits. You can see that whatever you do, it stays in time, and that's that's the real fun. That's the real appeal. You you can't go wrong. You just have to yank these two knobs around. You can change the number of steps. Um, assign these to a MIDI controller if you like, just learn that, um, and you can just, just have fun. Let's bring in some other stuff, this is our, our um, closed hat. You can see this is set to 11 steps with 5 hits, could be 8, could be 12. We've got a sort of bass sound here. Put that on the offbeat between the kick drums. 
with you now um, you can set the length of your pattern uh, in bars or steps and you can set the rate triplets slow it down pretty useful um, but what's really great is that um, as with all our uh, products that include the beat tools, you can just drag whatever pattern you've made here, you can drag that out um, as a MIDI file. Um, I've just, you can drag it into your DAW and there you go, um, ready to play. Okay, uh, that's Euclidean beats. The uh, We've seen Beat Shifter, but I what I didn't mention is it's kind of uh, raison d'etre, which is the, um, the fact that it shifts. So, here we are, here's our pattern. Um, Gonna simplify it a little bit. Uh, so, you can see on this track, we've got, I've got a lone kick here. So we've got a bunch of sliders that control um, how you can make this pattern evolve. Um, for a start, you could just change this slider, chance of, which um, reduces the chance of you hearing it. So if I put it back to 100%, you can hear it every time. And uh, now the main the main slider here to be aware of is shift. So if we set our number of steps, it will shift in two step jumps. You can see it jumping around. You reduce the shift slider a bit it won't happen so often so you'll get a few bars of it in the same place and then it'll jump there we are direction you can set which direction it's going to go velocity will will randomize the velocity in much the same way as uh, our bell rand knob does you probably don't want to double up on that because it's going to get a bit confusing um, we have some extra faders here hidden by this arrow, which are a recent addition. Uh, we have a chance of a miss, which means it will play the key next to it. Um, occasionally, depending on the chance setting, you can hear the hat changing to the percussion there. Um, chance of a roll. You have a similar effect to the, the drill effect there with the hi-hat. Again, if you reduce the slider, it won't happen every time. 
a new one which um, I've introduced is the chance of an alternate hit. So um, you can see each of these is we've got a 16th grid and we've got eight hits here starting on the one. Now if I put in some hits in between which gives us a 16th uh, hat pattern uh, if we reduce the chance of the alternate you won't hear them every time you'll only hear them according to how often you set the chance so there we are we're back just hearing this one this one this one so that's a nice way of just adding little um, in, little ghost note kind of accents that, that don't happen all the time. Okay, again, you've got eight tracks. As with all the sequences, eight tracks, eight pads. That's why we restricted the design of this to eight pads. So it's just a nice symmetry. So all this stuff to jump around. And um, with uh, with the beat shifter, you can you can of course drag your MIDI file again. Uh, there we are. But you can choose how many bars it will drag. And um, crucially, uh, any any shifting and evolving that you set up will occur in the exported MIDI files. So if you decide to export thirty two bars, then each of those bars will have uh, a shift. Um, in it if you've set it up to do so. So that, that's a really nice feature. You, could, you can drag out a, a, a really long um, drum part that's uh, naturally evolving and, and varying and, and then kind of edit that as you want, as you need to. Okay, uh, the final drum tool is the more mysterious Polybeats. Now, it looks a bit like Beat Shifter the whole thing about polybeats is that you can set each lane to a completely different grid. So this uh, means you can have some really silly stuff and some really interesting polyrhythmic stuff. Okay, these two are both on the 16th. Um, but we change that to 10 step. This is still on the 16th. We've got our hat here. 16, you could put that on a 14th, that's a 7 time. What it's actually, uh, what the way it's quite nice to work with this is to set up a solid backbeat. So we'd take, um, just set up some 4 kicks and you've got your snare. So it's a nice regular rhythm and you can lock those 3 tracks. Um, now what you can do is bring this other stuff in, uh, but you can randomise those. So anything that's not locked will randomise when you hit this button. You can adjust the velocity down. change the number of the maximum number of steps it'll randomize to so you can reduce that you get some interesting uh, shifting stuff happening like this uh, you can choose whether it will randomize to the power of two even numbers or three if you do three you're going to end up with some some very triplety stuff The bass sound makes it kind of hard to hear. Which one is that one? You can just keep hitting it. There's um, some useful preset patterns here. Um, in this menu, you can... Over the wave pattern's quite nice if you uh, get it on... 
you go to your hi-hat and make sure there was a lot of um, velocity to volume assigned. Um, even some filter. Uh, other patterns you have, um, you can just set up, well that's not so useful if you've only got two steps, but you can set up an alternate, you can move them to the right, uh, a ramp, reverse that, copy, uh, paste, according to the steps. And again, uh, as with all of them, I mean, you can uh, drag your pattern out uh, into DAW. You can, with all the beat tools, you can save the pattern and then reload uh, a collection of patterns that will go with different kits you've made. Um, and that's across all of them. Beat Shifter has a few more options here. You can, you can free if you set up your beat to shift around. You can hit freeze, and that will uh, stop it shifting. You see, it just sets these to uh, zero you can reset it to the point in which it was saved mine was in it and wasn't uh, saved as a pattern you can store the current pattern um, and then you can write it to disk or load from disk okay uh, hopefully that's given you um, a good flavor of what blanks can do uh, if you're familiar with Moonkits or electroacoustic, uh, I know you're going to have a lot of fun with this. Thanks.